O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. Of course, as you used to say, TGIF. This is a good... We got we some interesting stuff coming up this weekend. Not even necessarily in the market. If you guys are, uh, you know, combat sport fans, of course, you have whatever the heck is going on with Mike Tyson and Jake Paul tonight. That's on Netflix. Doing a big watch party for that. And then tomorrow, I think... John Jones fights Stipe, which is going to be uh, which is going to be awesome. Uh, both of those guys are a little bit older. Um, it's just it's just going to be good for the for the legacy of, of UFC. Uh, so a lot of interesting stuff going on this weekend, at least in the realm of sports. As far as the market's concerned, like you know, it was like fun while it lasted, right? And uh, this is kind of to be expected, right? I mean, that exuberance post market was or post election win was unbelievable, right? Um, you do get some thing you could uh, say is the trigger for this sell off, which is going to be, you know, some of the um, inflation reports and, and what Powell was saying, which is definitely legit. We're going to talk about that in a second here. But I mean, looking at the composite right now, all of this stuff is trying to chase. That gap, right? I mean, it, it once get, now, of course, for Friday, you can get a reversal on Monday. You know, maybe this is where they want to sell it off and they say, hey, whatever. Uh, you could also get it where it goes back down further on Monday and then we rally back up for the rest of the week. But in my opinion, there, you, you know, there's the idea of like, oh, well, Trump's back in charge. We're all going to make more money. I'm like, I haven't heard of a good, like, qualitative explanation, explanation for why that would be the case. Um, you know, there's still a lot of, of issues going on, at least with inflation, right? And like, okay, let's just talk about it because we already spoke about it. Uh, give me a second. Oh, good, man. Okay. Um, the, the big issue that you have here is is legit like core inflation. Excuse me, core CPI. You know, that's still that's still strong. And then you get October retail sales topping estimates, you know, new jobless claims low. What is the argument for lowering interest rates in December? And everyone's high, you know, harping on what Powell said, like, oh, we don't have to cut interest rates. He's like, he's been saying that forever, right? He just wants the data to come in. We, we've, we've known this, you know, um, that, that's nothing new. And I don't think that's cause for like a sell off. But what, what I what I do think is cause for caution or if anyone has this belief, which a lot of people do, right, that we're going to get interest rate cuts in December. Why? And I don't know, I'm, I'm in the minority of that for sure. But it just you still have a strong core inflation. Um, retail sales are strong, low jobless claims, everything I just said. Um, so I, I'm not really sure where we get that. Well, what will be nice is energy comes down, but again, that's not, you know, that's not part of the core, right? So anyways, I don't know. You, you are going to get some interesting stuff coming next year with a huge flood of super cheap EV vehicles. This might repress some, you know, stuff, at least regarding used cars and trucks. I mean, what, what are we at right here for that for October? Yeah, up 2.7, right? So still, month over month, you're off 3.4, but that will weight it down a little bit, right? Um, but I, I I don't know. It's still very strong, and I don't see the cause for an interest rate cut beyond everyone just wants it to. And, you know, if you don't get it, I mean, do you get it even further tank in the market? Just some crazy reaction. I mean, that's not, you know, what the Fed's responsible for in any capacity, but I'm sure in some way it can factor into what they decide to do, especially when you're like, on these really, really like tight spaces. So we have the composite off about 2.36%, trading at 18,656. The Dow Jones Industrial trading off 0.69% at 43,448. Yeah, the dollar, very strong right now at 106.72, uh, kind of flat, but off about 0.03%. Crude oil coming down even sharper, off 2.53%, $66.96. Yeah, the E-mini off about 1.44%. And then gold, uh, you know, we're still up on the year, but this is getting cracked down, right? You, of course, have a stronger dollar, but I, I think another thing we're starting to see, and this is going to become 
kind of more the case as, as more institutions and governments start adopting it. But I, I have this concept in my head that we are really seeing Bitcoin starting to fight gold right now, right? It, obviously, you know, you get elevated interest rates, gold doesn't become as appealing in some cases, obviously a stronger dollar, same kind of deal. Um, but even in the event like you get the rest of the world not doing super well because of whatever Trump's going to implement, um, I don't think gold gets bought there. I think that it, this is a non-appreciating asset in some capacity, right? I mean, beyond what, you know, the stock price movement here, or excuse me, the contract price movement. But Bitcoin itself is just such a rapidly appreciating asset. And with all these kind of concepts of adding, you know, some kind of, you know, federal or, or government reserve of crypto, I mean, that's going to elevate the price of Bitcoin even more. More people are going to want to get into that. It's more appealing than whatever's going on with gold, right? And so, you know, you can get to a realm where instead of governments buying, you know, gold, there's at least, you know, uh, Bitcoin's eating its lunch kind of in some capacity. And uh, I think that'll become more apparent as the years go on, that that's kind of what's going on and that's how people want to look at things like Bitcoin. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's what I think we're seeing here in a, in a major sense. But yeah, you know, we're trading at 2,566. We come off this massive high of 2,801. And just, you know, we're getting back down to, you know, August levels in this. And so, I mean, that's a good run this year for gold, but just the sell-off is really intense on it. You know, I was joined by Tim Ord yesterday, and he's looking at movements, at least in the GDX, you know, reaching the lower ends of their Bollinger Bands, and you get this reversal. If you want to check that out, you can go to our YouTube channel, Tiger Financial News Network. We have that video up. Make sure to like it, uh, or consider liking it, at least, and giving us a subscribe. But, you know, he... He's seeing this at least in the GDX. This is obviously we're looking at gold futures right now, but you know, it's same kind of movements, right? Like we're touching the lower ends of the Bollinger Bands and a lot of these things. And that can sometimes signal a trend reversal. I, I do think that Bitcoin in some capacity though is contributing to what's going on with gold. And I think it suppresses, you know, the movements you would usually see um, anyways. Folks, stay right there, we'll be right back. <laughs>